Welcome to Stepping Stones to Awareness Show. I'm Caroline Stevens and today I'm interviewing Cliff Taylor. Cliff has been known for doing a few voices on Spitting Image. He's an American currently living in London. Now today Cliff and I are going to talk about Brexit, Sovereignty, Parliament and Wake Up UK. So Cliff, over to you. Would you like to introduce yourself to the audience and explain how you managed to get one of the most sought after roles on TV with a spitting image? I think many of us are very have very fond memories of spitting image. So over to you Cliff. Oh, thank you. It's so uh, great to be here, Caroline. And as you know, I'm a big admirer of your work and your show and uh, the people that are working behind the scenes and in front of the camera and everywhere else in between. Hopefully on microphone the, is too uh, far away. Uh, Mike, Cliff, our, your microphone our, is, our needs friend. to be closer. Okay, hold on. How's that? Is that yeah, better? Good. That's better. Okay. Anyway, so I was going to say... Uh, pleasure to be here and uh, I've been admiring your work as we only met recently but I've uh, had a good time uh, looking at uh, what you've been trying to do and when I say good time I mean good that you are you know kind of like trying to uh, make those stepping stones uh, glow in the dark whilst people uh, deftly step through the darkness and um, I um, and also happy you asked me that question about spitting image because it's kind of a good story. I, I, I always thought the show was really fantastic when I first came here in the 80s and was just knocked out by it like uh, everyone else. So um, and I never had any idea I'd be on the show. And, uh, it was kind of all a big accident, really. So how did you get onto it? How Were you talent spotted in, in America? No. It was, no, no, no. Um, well, that's what they all thought, but actually I was here in the UK. But um, John Lloyd, who is the executive producer, I just rang him up out of the blue. And, um, you know, and I, and I sort of demanded, you know, I said, you guys do so much American stuff. I guess it's going back to my old Chicago, you know, advertising days, you know, where uh, we don't take any crap, man. We just ring people and we, get, we go after the sale with uh, steel teeth, you know. <laughs> And I guess it was some of my training there, but um, and I just rang him up in the blue and, and I got him on the phone. There was no one I couldn't get on the phone in the old days. It was great. You know, remember the telephone, you know, remember secretaries, you know, <laughs> yep. and, uh, and instead you know, of all and, this automation. I, I of, yeah. All this other stuff we've got now, which we should do a whole show on sometime. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of pleasure out of looking at nostalgia. As you know, I sent you a lot of boring me memes all the time with typewriters and uh, xerox machines right but um but uh you know i i just rang him up and um i almost demanded you know i just thought oh well i got him on the phone i have nothing to lose here you know and i said um you do a lot of american stuff why don't you have an american on the show and it really literally went like that and um you know and he sort of agreed but i didn't know really whether i got there i said well you know i'm an actor and i do voices and blah 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 and I've done this and, I, and uh, you know, I'm here now. And it just so happened that um, I didn't know this unbeknownst to me, but there was a special going and um, I got a phone call. Or, well, I, I told him my, who my agent was. My agent got a phone call and said, uh, yeah, they want you for the show. Wow. So can you give us some voices now then? You used to do Ronald Reagan. Isn't that cool? Uh, I didn't do Reagan. I did Reagan Sr. Uh, Reagan was done by the uh, wonderful Chris Berry. Do you remember Chris Berry from British Empire and lots of other crazy comedies? You did Bob Hope? Who else did you do? Yeah, uh, so Chris Berry, uh, well, there were a lot of people on there. Steve Coogan uh, kind of got a start there. Uh, and I got together with Steve again, you know, later on down the road. And I didn't even know he was on, you know, I was like some of the people come and do stuff and run away because they're so famous. But um, uh, Roy Bremner was... Uh, on it, um, uh, Kate Robbins, uh, lots of people, and then John Sessions, who uh, uh, is pretty famous, and um, the guy Steve Nallen, who does Thatcher, he's still pretty active. He's still, he kind of resurrects Spitting Image, uh, you know, with Thatcher uh, w where he can, whenever he can. Uh, yeah, I just came in and did a panoply of, of voices, uh, characterizations for different stars, Clint Eastwood, I did, and then other political figures that were sort of famous at the time, like Ed Meese. 
uh, you know, who was indicted for, uh, you know, so I did this whole uh, scene with him. When you see the show, you'll see that one. I could or I can just write you all the people I am. Mean, hopefully, you'll uh, recognize my voice. And then also, we did a big thing about Reagan in Hollywood. So I, I did, uh, you know, various characters that were around him in Hollywood at the time. And, um, you know, various other uh, sort of uh, characterizations with the other sketches we were doing. So fast Bob forward Hope, to right. today, and you've, you're now yeah. living in London, and you've been witnessing what's happening with Brexit or non-Brexit. Yeah, you've been yeah. seeing in what's fact, happened in Parliament. In fact, Could, what would Donald Trump yeah. make of all of this? Could you do some voices for him, do you think, in the future? I, I haven't. I haven't really. I haven't really tried to. Well, I made a joke. I went on Ed Sheeran. You remember Ed Sheeran? Yeah. Yeah, I went on his show. His uh, when he was, you know, he had a BBC Radio Four. He was trying to get me a show on BBC Radio Four. I met the producers, and I don't get along very well with producers. Actually, it's not really my fault. I just uh, I have a hard time working for people, you know, um, which is kind of good and kind of bad so it's, it's uh, the seeds <laughs> for my success the seeds for my failure all right and i love i love that saying that said you know there, there's a what there's a, a sort of an aphorism i think out there it was like uh, you know i can't remember i have to look it up again I, damn it it's on the tip of my tongue uh the guy said uh, you know the very thing that got him to this pinnacle of success was also the same thing that dragged him right back down into the gutter and i think that sums me up very well i'm sort of like up to these really high peaks and right down back to you know, sort of just like being this guitar player that uh, that likes to act. But um, but you know, Donald Trump. Now I haven't really tried to do him. I know that I watched a little bit of Saturday Night Live because I'm over in Europe and Asia so much, so I don't really keep up with American media very much. And I'm always amazed by how I don't know anybody over there anymore, really. And I don't really keep up with it. I I don't really you know it's all Netflix now and all this stuff, and I really don't like it very much. And a lot of what I see, I think, is pretty much garbage. You know, the American media, I think, is really horrible. Cliff, and the way can you move your camera? Up, yeah. You've moved a bit, so can you move your camera? Yeah, that's Sorry. better. That's yeah. brilliant. Thank Sorry, you. I just, I, yeah, I, 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 we wanted to see I you. Up to scratch my. I leaned, leaned up to scratch my back there. Sorry about that, Carol. I just knocked me back. <laughs> I caught, caught you, you out okay? there. So let's, and, uh, let's, let's, uh, look, uh, let's look at Brexit and sovereignty I, from an American's yeah. perspective. What do you make of it all? And could sure. you do any voices for us? Uh, well, the thing is, yeah, I can do. But the, the thing I was going to say is that, you know, you gave me a brilliant sort of eureka sort of moment when I thought, like, how would this handle? Because we have talked about why there's no spitting image. I get this all the time. You know, when's it coming back? Why isn't it around? It would be great if it was now because these idiots are so stupid that, you know, you could have a field day with them. But one thing that people don't realize is we don't have freedom of speech anymore. And I know that the show was a, a political type show and it was made with comedy. And how do, well, we call it satire, don't we? We even had, uh, you know, we had even had the two Davids on, you know, and uh, and David goes, sat normal satire breaks down and they went into a serious mode, you know. And how do you square those two uh, you know those circles and squares. How do you how do you make those two twines meet? You know, and it's it's difficult. But I think the secret was, and you made me think about it, Caroline. I have to congratulate you. Was um, you know, because I gave it some thought. You know, sitting here and I said, you know what it was? The puppets. You know, these monstrosities that they would create. You couldn't help but not laugh at them, no matter what they were doing, right? And I thought sitting here talking with you, like, you know, because uh, hey, I'm a comedian, but uh, you know, you say comedy like a and politics. Well, comedy and politics really don't mix, do they? Well, I What's don't your know. thought on that? I think, I think uh, people would disagree after this week. I mean, it is a bit of a pantomime, isn't it? I think the people in the UK are beginning to realise what Parliament is all about, and it's just a show. And, uh, you know, they are puppets at the end of the day. And who, who pulls the strings? <laughs> I like that. They're puppets, yeah. Maybe we've gone full circle. Now they're the puppets. Yeah. We don't need to make puppets anymore. We'll just use we'll just use CGI and use them, sort of distort their faces maybe. And well, you've seen they can that. Hire me you know Ollie Robbins. Have you heard of Ollie Robbins? Yeah, Oily. Well, I've heard of. Uh, uh, yeah, we changed his name to Oily. Oily. Oily Robbins. Oily. Uh, Oily Robbins, like robbing. Well, Oily Robbins. Can you see robbing? Uh, robbing us. Oily Robbins <laughs> at the bottom of this Christmas tree. He's sat next yeah, to me. Oily gotta, Robbins is sat there. next to me here. Yeah. This is it, Oily has he, Robbins. Has he, he's really cute. Has he picked your pocket yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, Donald sat next to him. Really? Yep. Did he pick um, your pocket oh, when you I, lived in the USA? 
you, you mean Donald Trump? Yeah, well, he yeah. wouldn't have been is around. That, yeah, I mean, yeah. He was, he's a glo- is it? Would you say he's a globalist, uh, I, Donald Trump? I, I did see a funny sketch, you know, just because you know YouTube actually brings me closer to the to the USA because a lot of stuff drops in, but you know I ignore it. But um, I started watching a little bit of Saturday Night Live because you know I'm really late, uh, and I found a comedian that I actually think is kind of funny, uh, and he died, you know, he OD'd in Chicago, and I heard about that years ago, and I thought. Oh, who's this idiot? I don't care, you know. But actually, I started watching his first uh, interview on uh, um, on uh, David Letterman, and then. It, but anyway, uh, another thing dropped in. Talk about him later, but um, just another, you know, uh, drug addict casualty in Hollywood, Hollyweed, as I like to call it. But he, um, they had uh, what's his name? You know, the, he does the Donald Trump uh, impersonation on Saturday Night Live. One of the brothers. Uh, What's those? The uh, what are those brothers' names? That one of them's married to Kim Basinger. Uh, uh, oh, their name is, escapes me now. Trump, and it's really quite good. He's got the wig, and he looks. He's got orange makeup on, you know. And um, they had a, a sketch they did. I thought was very funny with uh, Stormy Daniels. You know that? Oh, it's so. It's so cliche, isn't it? You know, but it was actually quite funny. Uh, like he, you know, they, they had Donald Trump, and he was like his pants down, and he's in his underwear, and he's with Stormy, you know, and it, it looked it was quite funny. And when he was up close, they had you know how they always make fun of his hand size. The size of his hands are supposed to be really small. Well, they got they didn't, you didn't see him, but they got this little doll and with a little hand. You could just see just a little piece of the hand. The little. The little hand was stroking her face. <laughs> she was like, she was like, <laughs> this little doll's head, you know, plastic doll's head. They went to a, just a, some five and dime store and got a little doll's hand, you know, the little doll's head, like, oh, oh, darling, oh, you're so lovely. And it lasted about ten seconds. And he goes, oh, that was great. <laughs> yeah, all done. <laughs> so who could we so use in like, Parliament? You know, <laughs> what could we do on the spitting images for the parliamentarians then? I, I don't know. I, if you know, if I had the magic answer for that, I'd probably be sitting in an office in ITV right now, talking them into doing a show. But I, that's a good question. I think it's very pertinent because I don't think they want a show, Caroline. It would be too controversial. It would be too un-PC. You know, they have to control the narrative, and they're not going to take a chance to do anything that you know, unless they had those people in their hip pocket. The executive person is John Lloyd, and uh, I'm not so sure he's up for it. He does other shows now. Uh, the, the two, uh, Fuck and Law, Fluck and Law, who created Spin, uh, Spinning Image, of, uh, I don't know, they've just dispersed somewhere. I don't know where they are now. One of them's in China. And they don't really seem to show any interest in trying to kick it back up again. I, I used to sit in one of their opera, uh, uh, John Law, and he's a very nice guy, and he created Spinning Image. I, I sit in his office several times pitching him ideas and, hey, let's do this and let's do that. And I couldn't believe it. It was kind of very much like, hey, mate, you know, like it's almost impossible to get anything rolling here. <laughs> but I thought, you know, like, well, Margaret Thatcher like was a very good. Get... She was very interesting, wasn't she? And she the was. caricature with the nose. Yeah. 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 And that's Steve Nellen. And uh, he was a guy. Can you believe a guy was doing Thatcher? A lot of people don't know that. I was a, a, a guy, not a, not a woman. Well, it would be good for you to come to the basis uh, office, wouldn't it? Come down to see us, and then we could do a show together. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Brexit, would, then. But anyway, what back, have you been for? You've been for you know, well, I'm watching, I'm watching the Brexit right now. Like, Theresa May, she's in... Um, you know, she's in Brussels right now. I mean, I, I don't know the whole thing. Like you say, it's a pantomime, but I've heard that several times from several people. And um, but you know, I think the whole thing's been good. If I just put my take on it, that I think what's happened is it's it's helped to wake people up to your favorite, you know, sort of analysis on what is happening all the time, which is nonstop, 100% corruption. And the, we all know these people are corrupt, but they hide, don't they? And I think they've had to come out. It must be very uncomfortable for them to have to come out of their uh, hiding places, right? And reveal themselves for the, you know, criminals that they are. And I'm not afraid to say they're all criminals. You know it. I know it. But, you know, they, only, they seem to be the only people that don't know it, right? They're living this sort of ruse. And, you know, have you even followed, when they, have you you followed know, was, any of the Finchley Road the debacle? That a lot of them are associated with shell companies out of Finchley Road. 
I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I mean, David Cameron should have been locked up for the Panama Papers, right? The reveal, what was revealed out of those secret accounts, how much money. That's all the, that's all the banking, you know, the, uh, the elite bankers. That's how they're paying these politicians and or blackmailing them. Because really, when you look at the pedophile rings, and, you know, this is serious stuff. This is why I don't know how we could get comedy in here with this, because it's actually quite pathetic and sad, you know, when children are abused. And I really think that not only abused, but murdered and killed. I mean, dare I say, you know, uh, the truth. But it's a very serious, serious thing. And um, a lot of people don't want to look at it or, and I don't blame them. I mean, God, it's it's a horrific, uh, you know, uh, subject matter, isn't it? And you're tackling that. And I think it's very good. And I commend you for it. I don't want to sound patronizing here. I mean, I really do admire you. For, and you need to do it. You know, you need some people have to do it nonstop. It's you interesting, though. You mentioned about like you. you mentioned we were talking about Finchley Road, and we've actually got Brexit. Yeah, well, I haven't heard about. What, but what, we've we've what's actually got Brexit. Well, we've got Brexit MPs that have actually been mentioned in the Paradise and Panama Papers, and we've got Brexiteers yeah. who. Uh, are basically are willing to forgive this and it's like well if there were a main MP would it make any difference surely a crime is a crime or an alleged crime is an alleged crime is it not they say they're paying tax but the tax the money might not have been brought in totally up front and above, above board. So they're paying tax on, on money which shouldn't even be brought in in the first place. Yeah. So we've got cognitive well, like dissonance that, yeah. here, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, who's going who's gonna to look into this? Who's going to prosecute this? I mean, you know, we, we know this about Britain, that there really is nothing statutory in this country. I mean, I, you know, I say things, people, well, what about America? Well, all right, America is a third world banana republic as well, you know, but we're not in America. We're here. So all I can do is lend my, my humble opinion here. Um, you know, if I do a Cockney accent, they'll accuse me of making fun of them and trying to be like Dick Van Dyke, you know, so I don't want to fall that far down. But so I have to keep my original accent. You know, when I tell people how long I've been here, the first question I get is, well, you still sound American. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> why should I change my accent? I mean, what do you want me to do? I mean, it's actually my accent has changed quite a lot, and, but people here don't hear it. Other people hear it, like from foreign countries and Americans hear it. Oddly enough, um, I guess you can call it a mid-Atlantic. And um, but the the thing is, coming back here, I digress and I apologize. But you know, like the thing is, uh, the biggest investors in the USA is the UK. And you know, all of this bullshit about excuse my French about you know um, that there's not going to be anything. I mean, um, Britain is making a ton of money in the US and in South America, and they have investments all over the place. Uh, you know, uh, the Rothschild banking uh, industry, uh, you know, uh, trust, whatever you want to call it, sets the price of gold down in the city every day. Now, these are things that I know anybody can know, but nobody wants to look at it. But these are things that are very, very relevant to what's going on, because, you know, I love that old saying, follow the money. Yep. You follow the money, you get to the truth. So you don't have to, you can be an actor, you can be the guy who picks up the rubbish every day of the week. It doesn't matter. People need to wake up and they need to realize they're being taken for a ride. They're being swindled. Um, I think a lot of people know that when they get their tax bill, but what can they do about it? Well, you know, if I say, if I go too far, they'll be knocking on my door and taking me away in handcuffs and probably revoking my right to be here and kicking me out of the country. I mean, I, that's really a reality here. Freedom of speech is dead. This is why we don't have spitting image anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah you know, uh, you know, it's all related. Uh, spe freedom of speech is dead. And it's dying in America, too. You know, um, uh, you know, you before, if you didn't have any threat of violence or anything involved in anything, you really literally uh, could say what you want. Uh, it hurt the feelings. Well, too bad. Have you heard, Here, um, did you follow the debacle over the EU legislation, the proposed legislation about Article 11 and Article 13, which is going to make things very difficult for people to share posts on, on, on social media in the future, for example? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. There, it's every day is clamping down more and more and more. I mean, they've been, you know, bitching at Facebook and Twitter and hey, Facebook and Twitter used to have quite a lot of uh, freedom. They didn't, you know, get involved with, you know, chasing down profiles and, you know, finding, uh, you know, uh, uh, horrible, uh, the horrible people that they don't like that are hurting feelings. You know, you look at the Internet. I mean, like, you don't have to look at anything on the Internet, do you? I mean, nobody forces you to. No. But, you know, I mean, it's like I mean, you can block people. You, know, you don't have to. I mean, sure, you might see maybe three seconds of something, but whatever. But what about the, the pedophilia and the pornography and all of this stuff? Well, those are all their friends, aren't they? That's the corruption. And I'll come back to your favorite word here. You go to Hollywood all the, and, and in America, all the people that create the porn and have done for many years before Internet. We had DVD, we had videotape. All those people are all like just a very small elite clique of people connected to all the big money people and all the big politicians. And, you know, if it were up to me, and people ask me, you know, like, well, why don't you run for political office? Why don't you make a difference? Well, I don't think I could because I'd be dead. But if it were up to me, I'd shut those people down tomorrow. Well, it's, it's interesting, Cliff, because I actually stood for Parliament in 2015. And, uh, I think each... I might have remembered that. Did you know that? So each political party... It sounds familiar. Each political hmm. party has an assessment process. So you go yeah. through the hoops. You jump through the hoops, jump over the hurdles, right. and they're assessing you. Now, I, I did yeah. make the uh, fatal mistake just before I had my assessment. I asked a question about democracy in the party. There was a deathly silence in the room. Then two days later, I went through my assessment and failed it on the, on the fact that my voice wasn't loud enough. And it's like, oh, okay. But really, it was all to do with the fact that I had sort of started creating waves because I used that dirty word called democracy. There's no democracy in political parties. People don't realize that. But you're not going to get oh very God. far in a political party unless you toe the line. And they'll say, oh, well, you won't right. be whipped. But then, of course, yeah. you know, if you're never going to get elected, then it doesn't matter. You can say what you want, can't you? I mean, the manifesto is not binding anyway. We've seen that from the Tories. They can promise whatever they want on the, on the doorstep. And there's no accountability. Yeah, yeah. But like so many of them have been charged with crimes, haven't they? And I was looking at that. Just so shocked, you know, like how many of them have... Even Boris Johnson, what, last week, right? I don't know why I'm so well-informed. An actor shouldn't be in well-informed, you know? You find himself out of a job pretty quick. Uh, um, oh, uh, what does he say? Oh, I'm sorry. But he gave an apology. But he d forgot to declare, how much was it? 55 or 150,000 pounds? Of, did you see that? No, I missed that one. I actually had to apologize. Yeah, Boris Johnson, just a couple of days ago, I had to apologize for not declaring money that was given to him by I can't remember who. I just skirted over the story. I said, here you go again. I mean, he should be drummed out of out of office for that. Um, you know, but it's all right when they mess up, isn't it? If you don't pay your council tax, you're going to have a bailiff at your door next week. Absolutely. You know, you're going to have a bailiff knocking on your door and coming in your house to find whatever you've got that's worth something that they can take. You better find a storage room somewhere, you know, to put your uh, valuables in. And you'll have to pay for that. That'll probably be as much as the council tax you owe them. I don't know. How can you it's just how can, how can you just forget that you've been given ninety five thousand pounds? Yeah. Well, that's it. You didn't. You you tried to get away with it, and um, you Got know you're a liar out. and a thief. Boris Johnson's a liar, a thief, and a criminal. And he proved that to me a long time ago because when I you know I went away for a while, I came back. And I looked at London and I said, who's the who, who are the criminals involved in this city? And, and you know, I looked and said, well, it's this guy. Because uh, I used actually I used sent a, I sent an email to Kim Livingstone and he's a total red communist, isn't he? And I'm very I, communism to me is probably one of the most abhorrent ideologies ever. 
you know, um, and responsible for God knows how many millions and millions of murders in the 20th century. But I could walk down the street with a hammer and sickle flag and, and nobody. So it's not hard to see who won the war, who won, who's winning now. And but it's all just names, isn't it? You know, um, left paradigm, right paradigm. So what? But Boris Johnson, you know, I looked around London, you know, maybe 10, 12 years ago. And all I saw when I came were cranes and derricks everywhere. You know, I said, what happened to this town? You know, it's like, wow, it's just in the grip of, uh, of this uh, capitalist, rogue capitalist nightmare. And I'll say that because rogue capitalism is just as evil to me as, you know, as blatant, uh, you know, Bolshevik communism. But, you know, and I, I got the picture. I said, great, this guy's going to. This guy's going to sign on and get a green check with without a bottom line, uh, you know, for as much as the builders and the developers are going to destroy London. And here we go. It's destroyed. Yeah, for sure. You can't move now. And as, as you say, this, the cranes are all over the place. Yeah, it's destroyed. I can't believe it. And, you know, I cruise around the West End. I can't believe how dead it is. There's no money. There's no people with money. There's no fun anymore. It's just criminals everywhere. Uh, all these people, you don't know who they are, what they are, where they come from, what they're doing. Yeah. You, you know, you feel really unsafe. There used to, I, I remember walking around like in theater land, you'd see famous people everywhere. I used to bump into all kinds of people. I have run into everybody. We ought to do a show and let me tell you about all the people I ran into and what my experiences were like. Because I'm going to write a book about it one of these days. London was a village and it was a prosperous village and it was safe. You know, you didn't sure maybe there was a little bit of crime and, you know, but the real major crime was down on the other side of town somewhere and it didn't flow up into there. And, you know, it was pretty damn safe. And man, was it nice. New Year's walking around Oxford Circus. Well, I just having a whale. Of time. I walk around there now and you have all these gaudy, you know, what's our new mayor? Uh, Siddiqui uh, uh, Kanistan has got. You know, you got all these gaudy sort of like uh, tuk tuk, you know, what bicycle tuk tuk, you know, sort of rickshaws, you know, <laughs> piling around disco music going and lights. And <laughs> yeah, it's lost you know, any charm traffic. it had. It's lost a lot of charm. Tra uh, so gaudy. I mean, even even the red light district in Amsterdam has more ambiance. You know, I mean, <laughs> well, maybe I, I might well, be pushing it there a little bit. So, but, um, but, you know, but. Unbelievable. Well, I mean, basically, I we, we, we voted two and a half years ago to leave the EU and I was the campaign manager for Leave EU. I used to train the activists to uh, yeah. take to the streets and man the stalls. And this is one of the Corex boards that we used to distribute. It's time to yeah. leave dot EU. I'm turning my back on the EU. One size doesn't fit all. And I think that says it all. One size doesn't fit all. We don't want to be a member of this big super state. We've just signed the UN migration pact regardless. And we're giving over our military to Brussels. So we've been going on about this for over a year now. And suddenly people are just waking up to the fact that we're losing our shirts. What would you say to the people of Great Britain now? No, it's all 100% true. And I was going to say congratulations, you know, for trying to save your country. Um, I'm part Scottish, uh, and I can't stand it up there. Although I hate to admit that when I agree with Nicola Sturgeon, uh, the, uh, the troll that runs the SNP up there, yeah, the most left-wing sort of distant, you know, I, I can't believe how many people I argued with up there about immigration, you know, because I am really zero tolerance on, you know, on the whole thing. And, you know, I, get, I, I know I could be called a lot of horrible names for that, but I don't hate anybody. I'll put my disclaimer in right now. But, um, you know, this country is not Britain anymore. And I think that says it all. And it's fast going to become even more that way. And I just saw the most disturbing video last night. I, I gave you the, uh, should I do a plug for it? I don't Go know. On. Um, it's called the, should I do a plug for it or Yes, not? please. For the, the guy's channel, is it all right? Yep. Uh, the, it's called the Iconoclast. And I think this guy's British and he's from up north and he does some incredible videos. He stays just on the right side of, you know, of censorship. Because, you know, you step over that line on YouTube, you're finished. 
you know, um, they'll demonetize you. They will uh, put restrictions on the account. You can't share it. It's really become an Orwellian nightmare on YouTube. Who's it owned by? Google. Who's Google? It's, they're part of that those that nice little elite, you know. And you look at the people that work for Google, and they are so unrepresented in society, yet they are running that company. Um, and, you know, and so, but that said... Um, you know, this guy stays just on the right side of it. I can't see that they'd be able, but he's almost there. I mean, they might bump him anyway, but um, he never goes over the line, you know, to uh, to uh, offend our rulers, okay, in the way specifically. But um, but one thing he's very hard about is um, he was he's very thorough with the uh, numbers, and and you know, London is is less than fifty percent white, uh, you know, white British. And all the other cities in in, 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 in the UK are like 50% below. And, you know, he, he, this was just in the last 10 years. This is in the time that Theresa May and David Cameron, I mean, they might as well have been labor politicians or even farther left than Tony the Liar. Well, I think, liar. That, I think that's a fair point. It doesn't matter which color you vote no. into parliament. They were all the same because no. they're run by the same they're global elites. Same. And so it frustrates me when I see Brexit groups get together over, <laughs> over wine or coffee and, and, and want to oust Theresa May and call her all the names under the sun, when in actual fact, they might as well have been putting Mog in there and doing the same to him. It's, it's not the person, um, they're all in it together, but they're, you know, they're puppets at the end of the day, and it's who pulls their strings. And you can tell these people, you can try to explain, but the penny still hasn't dropped, that it makes no difference whatsoever. You've got the EU uh, controlling us, and they're controlled by the big the, the corporations so what do you do um, we just got to get out and we, that's why we're focusing on common law now so that's our policy for next year getting the people together under common law and we now need to start petitioning the lords the queen uh, before it's too late before our country is t our United Kingdom is totally sold down the river I look at the sadness of it, too. I, I told you about the Daily Mail, and I hate the Daily Mail now. I, I used to think it was all right with the last publisher. I thought maybe it had a semblance of, you know, uh, independence. Now it's just totally sold out. In fact, it's, not, it's backing Teresa and leave our prime minister alone, you know. But the, the comments section, that's what you should go to. I recommend anybody, forget the stories, go straight to comments. And you'll see what real people are thinking. They have a best rated and worst rated. Read best, read worst, you know. Um, but honestly, you really see what real people are thinking. And one woman wrote in, you know, I, I collect them. I, what an idiot I am. Am I so bored that I have nothing else to do but collect great comments? Well, I'll tell you this about the British. They are the kings of the barb in the English language. Well, they should be because they created the English language. <laughs> they really know how to stick that knife in. Well, that's good. Americans can too, but America's a little more blunt about it. Just the F word and that's the end of it, you know. But the, but the British make uh, use irony and they use a lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> clever innuendo and well, a lot of tricks. We're supposed to have and, some uh, of the best comedy stuff. shows well, in the world, absolutely. aren't we? Um, and we, you know, Yes Minister was one of the most popular. Do you remember Yes Minister? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's just and, like know, that. And why is that that they're able to do that? Well, it's called education. And education is a real bad name right now. And, uh, you know, speaking English is racist. And I've even heard that, um, you know, that they're starting to change the street signs, you know, in, cer um, in certain countries. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, this is where it's going. And people don't seem to realize it. You know, you're losing your country. Why are they selling it? Why are they giving it away? Well, it's because well, the UK is a corporation at. and we are all bought and sure. sold with the legal fiction as well. So anyway, Cliff, have you got a final message? Have you got, you've got a final message to the audience? I do, that people, as you said, they need to wake up and, and you know, I couldn't even sit in that uh, coffee shop with those people that you do. So I commend you for your patience because I, I can't even get that far. I can only talk to people like you. Um, but, you know, it's a pretty big opposition out there, too. I, I don't really think there is any way to convince these snowflakes that, you know, uh, because all they do is scream at you that you are a horrible person and you're a killer and a hater and blah, blah, blah. 
But all I know is that I was talking about that woman who wrote in. She said, she said, I don't really care about what happens with Brexit or whatever. She said, all these po I despise politicians because my friend right now is disabled and she is labeled as a scrounger. And, you know, if and, and I look at that and I say, you know something, I think it's really sad, the predicament that the people have been put in here. Because if you look at all the money that has been squandered and wasted away for 10, 20, 30 years, and even people, there was uh, on this Iconoclast video, um, they were looking at uh, Enoch Powell, who's a very interesting person. And the, even the guy said, he said, I'm not a big Enoch Powell fan, but he said even everything that he said has come true, and he said, and the projections are even, even everybody that made the most wildest projections, people would have said, oh, you're crazy. No way is Britain gonna, every city gonna be 50%, you know, foreign born, and and it is in the last 10 years, 50% of and all the people are foreign born. What does that mean for a country? I know. You know, well, who are these people? No, I just have to finish with, who are these people gonna vote for? They're gonna vote for the people that the elite want them to vote for. That's the message. They're going to be controlled. And the elite will get the country they want. Well, What's going to happen well, to everybody Exactly. Else? And they, do you know what they're going to do? Going to they're to setting up else. a new political party. And, oh, and it's just going to be screwed. more of the same. And people more can't the see same. it. And they want that. They want that. Oh, yeah, new party. It's going to be great, isn't it? And and then the, the phone call comes through. Guess what you're going to do? And that's what's going to happen. That's what happened with Nigel Farage. That's what happens to all of them. Even yeah. Theresa May in the beginning said, no deal is better uh, than a bad deal. And, to, and I bet the phone rang about, uh, about five minutes after that and said, uh, excuse me, dear, but uh, here's what you're going to do. Because you never heard her say that ever again after that, did you? No. You know she got the phone call and that's the end of it. But what I want to say is just I just think it's so sad for the people in this country who are suffering. They could have first class medical care with the billions that have been squandered and foreign aid and all of these and a new aircraft carrier and, you know, you name it. We could all be having the, the best medical plan at BUPA that money could buy. Everybody. And we can have enough food and we can have enough. Well, hey, the system isn't created like that, is it? The system is created to make you toil, sweat and, and slave. How come and it's Scotland not an has uh, produced so much oil and is now poorer because of it than any other country that produces oil? So yeah. what does the British yeah. government do with it? Exactly. Anyway, well, at this so point, what we're probably going to do uh, for the edited version, we're actually going to show a three minute clip of me speaking in March. I spoke at a prayer day in London and I actually spoke to 2000 people and I just said, hey, wake up, Great Britain. We're giving away our fishing. We're giving away our military. Do you know about this? Is it fishing? Yeah. Um, my name's Caroline Stevens. I work for Vote Leave as a national coordinator to help get the Brexit vote. And what concerns me is the fact that we're going to lose our fishing industry. It's our government, it's not the EU, it's our duplicitous civil servants that are actually in, including this transition period, which we didn't need for fishing at all. Now, I think a lot of you probably saw um, the bit of a circus, if you like, on the Thames this week, throwing fish back into the sea. But that's what our fishermen's actually had to do for the last 40 odd years. It's the biggest scandal when you consider the amount of food banks we use, the homelessness, and we're throwing good fish back into the sea, and we lost most of our waters when we joined the EEC. Now, the transition period will actually mean that we'll still be adhering to the EU rules and we will, yes, for fishing, yes, right through till the end of 2020 and possibly beyond. There is an open date. The fishing industry, because of the new regulations that are coming in after 2019 March, it will mean potentially the loss of our fishing industry in its entirety. Also, it's true, also, which is the reason why there was the, the fish being thrown into the Thames this week. Also, perhaps it's not been well documented that most of our military now is being signed up to the unification 
that's going on in the rest of the EU. So it's called PESCO, the Permanent Structured Cooperation. We haven't actually signed up to the official document, but we are going for central procurement. We will never be a sovereign nation again until we have control of our armed forces and until we have control of our fishing waters. And also, we've got trade deals being discussed. Remember TTIP? Yeah, that's come back up to the fore again. So we need to root out all this corruption that our British people have been subjected to, and we don't even know it. So really, we need to pray for our government, for our Queen, because I know that some barons petitioned the Queen in 2001, because the barons from the House of Lords were so concerned about the Treaty of Nice, they could see that open door immigration would destroy our national identity. The Queen was petitioned at that point. So we do need to pray for the Queen, the Parliament, and for perhaps a new Parliament with people who are more God-fearing. So I'll leave that with you, David. Thank you very much. What, what you got to look forward some, to some next year? Made, yeah, some guy made a comment about that. He said, you know, the country, so many people are starving and you're dumping all these fish out into the sea. You know, what's going on here? That's exactly Nobody seems to what be able I was to saying. Get a, a handle on that. And I, you know, I sit here and I, I compliment the British, don't I, on, on many things. But, you know, like, like that form you had to look at when you had to go into Parliament, that's so typically British, isn't it, to give you this giant form and you got to jump over all these hoops. And, you know, I have to do the same thing to become a citizen now. I could have got a passport 35 years ago. I, I don't want one. You know, it's like, and now you have to answer all these questions. Are you a terrorist? Would you be a terrorist? Have you thought about being a terrorist? Which, have you looked at, a terror, at terrorism? Man, they can classify that any the way they want. And I sometimes think, and I'm saying this publicly, I've never had before, but I don't give a, you know, rat's butt. You know, if, if you want me to leave, I will leave uh, because I don't think there's anything left here anymore. And I would recommend that I can see why people are moving to Australia or moving to uh, South America or anywhere, you know, anywhere where the sun shines and they might be able to keep some of their money. Well, that's true. Okay, well, on that note, uh, thank you, Cliff, and uh, let's hope we do some shows together. Well, thank you. I will I definitely look forward to coming back, and we can. Uh, I wish we could recreate some uh, spitting image. It would be great, because as you say, you're right. We could have a field day with these people, and I think we could do a really great show, you know. It would be wonderful. Well, let's hope we could, uh, yeah, maybe I'll be Prime Minister one day then, Cliff, and then we, you could be the Donald Trump. Yeah, one thing, one thing about, yeah, absolutely. One thing, though, I'm not going to hire Ian Hislop to be, uh, he was one of the writers on the, was the show I Private did. Eye. Yeah, he was. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I used to talk to Ian Hislop in Battersea. I lived in Battersea. I'd see him in the morning going to work. Um, but his politics and his horrible, unbelievably detestable liberal credentials, I would just throw him out the door, you know, if he walked in to try to get his old job back. So be sure you warn him uh, if we do bring the show back. Right, gonna, okay. My, so my we'll have to have our own casting couch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lovely <laughs> That'll to be speak to you, Cliff. Uh, hopefully we'll meet in person very shortly. And I want to say thank you to everybody at home. This is probably be quite a surprise interview for everybody. You didn't think I knew somebody from Spitting Image. And uh, I didn't last week. But anyway, thank you so much. And I hope you will come back and watch Stepping Stones to Awareness. A little bit of satire to this uh, incredible... Uh, you know, Brexit uh, sort oh, of nightmare. Oh, we need to get some more puppets. Think, uh, we need some more puppets I, besides I, Ollie puppets. and Donald. I, I want to I, I wanna finish with a prognostication. I don't think Brexit's going to happen. Not I just don't think they're going to happen. Back control. Anyway, thank you very much for listening and see you again soon. And I'm Caroline Stevens. And this was an interview with Cliff Taylor in London. Thank you and good night.